welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 60th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today we are going to talk about the 25 must-haves for the efficient office desk. And in this week's Petit Plaisir, at the end of today's episode, I'm going to share with you a film set in Paris that was made in 2013 that I wish I would have known about sooner because I absolutely adored it last weekend when I had the opportunity to finally view it. That will be at the end of today's episode. But before we get to that, I want to talk about the many different things and ways we can set up our office desk, the desk that is not in our home, the desk that allows us to perform at our best when we don't have everything that we need at our disposal. What are those items? That's what I'm going to share with you today. And I'd like to begin with a quote that you may recognize. I always think of it this time of year. Quote, I would send you a bouquet of newly sharpened pencils if I knew your name, wrote Tom Hanks to Meg Ryan in You've Got Mail. Every year, the quote uttered by Tom Hanks in Nora Ephron's You've Got Mail dances around my memory. And while seemingly simple, the precision of sharpened pencils organized in bulk, ready to be offered to the writer to produce any sort of work that is asked of them reminds me of the beauty of of a pencil, the opportunity to try, correct, and try again next time. Much like each new school year or the coming of fall season at work, after the long summer getaways have been taken and enjoyed, when we return, I find that most of us, students as well as seasoned veterans in any profession, want to do it better this time, want to make it simpler, and most of all, want to enjoy our time at work all the while feeling productive by the time the end of the day rolls around. The summer offers all of us, no matter what our profession, a breather, a chance to correct and try to do it better the next time. Each year, I walk back into my classroom and I devise new habits and rituals that will better allow me to perform at my best and feel the most confident no matter what the day may bring. Whether it is making sure my favorite tea is stocked for my afternoon break to rejuvenate me just enough to finish the day strong, or recognizing a way to cease the steady loss of pens throughout the year, if I can solve these basic hiccups that when solved allow the day to run more smoothly, I feel primed and polished to be a better version of myself. So today, as I know many of the Simply Luxurious Life readers and listeners of the podcast are teachers, as well as for anyone going back to work or getting back into the regular schedule after what may have been a looser schedule during the summer, I wanted to share a list of items to have on hand at your desk to ensure the three main objectives when we go to work. What are those three? Number one, We want to create a desk, an office area around our desk that allows us to feel and perform at our best. Number two, we want to be efficient, use our time wisely and not waste time looking, searching, creating things unnecessarily. And number three, how we get there is to create a clutter-free environment. And so that means we have to choose the right items and not any extra items to create and ensure that we can get to these objectives sooner. So let's start with the list. We have 25 to get to, and I want to share bits and pieces of my own experience as we go through them. Also, please, if anything pops into your mind, like, oh, I would definitely add this, or I definitely have found this to be helpful, please, please do share in the comments on the blog, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 60. All right, here we go. All right, number one is moisture. I have this at the top of the list, primarily because where I've been teaching the last nine, 10 years has been in a very dry climate. And for my comfort's sake, I've got to have my lips moisturized, my hands moisturized, anything 
to ensure that I feel physically comfortable with whatever it is that I'm doing. I would also add to this list, at the top of our list, always have water on hand. Drinking water, however you like to have it, whether you flavor it, whether you have it cool in a fridge somewhere, make sure you always have drinking water on hand. And some people maybe say, well, then I'll have to run to the bathroom. Good. (laughs) That's healthy. That's very healthy. Um, Your skin will thank you. And if you are speaking a lot, this is obviously a must have. Um, So always have moisture on hand for your lips your hands and your throat and body overall. I am going to provide a link to a product that's actually a multi-use product that is going to act as a lip balm as well as hand lotion. And there are many products out there like this, but this product comes from One Love Organics and it's called Wonder Balm. And it is supposed to be fantastic for moisturizing your skin and your lips without having to go buy multiple products. Remember, our goal is to simplify, have fewer things, but get as much efficiency out of these items as we can. And that would be a great one to check out. Number two on our list is to have our contact lens solution and any extra case available. Whether we have contacts or not, now if you're a teacher, that is. Now, I know not everyone's a teacher, but I always have these items on hand, mainly because I need them. But then I started realizing students may need them as well. And I've had many students lose a contact or have to clean one. And it's just so easy and quick for them to do it in my classroom. So it's a great idea. But the extra case as well, sometimes your contacts just go fuddy-duddy on you and you need to put your glasses on and you have a case right there at school to take care of that along with a solution. Number three, lunch utensils. Always have plastic utensils or utensils of your choice in your desk ready for you to use. Whether you typically bring them home every day or not, at least you always have a set at school should you forget one on a particular day. And there's nothing like going to lunch and going, oh, I have a salad and I don't have a fork and no one else for whatever reason has one. And you know, you just have those days. This will prevent that. And it's easy to get plastic ones. That's a great backup plan to have. So number three is to have your lunch utensils ready to go. Number four is an absolute must have for yourself and a great way to (laughs) help out staff members, colleagues, and then students as well as need be. But emergency stash, have an emergency stash, whether it's feminine products, band-aids, safety pins when a button pops off, extra strength, Tylenol. Now as a teacher, we cannot hand out medicine here in the state of Oregon and for many states around the country, but for yourself, for staff members, having deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste, breath mints, these little things that just make you feel a little more confident and secure so that you can go about your everyday business. So number four is to have an emergency stash. Number five, I have made so many quick friends (laughs) with this item. Have a Tide to Go. And this crosses both sexes. I've had male and female students ask for my Tide to Go. And staff members especially so appreciate it when someone has a Tide to Go. Number five, and there are many different brands of this. Clorox, I think, has a brand as well where as soon as the stain happens, when it's fresh, you can use Tide to Go. And I'm telling you, It works. It dries in five minutes. You wouldn't even know you spilled your coffee on your pants. Absolutely highly recommend this product. So tie to go. Have it in your purse. Have it in your desk. Have it in multiple places where accidents may occur and you will be thankful that you did. Number six is to have tech chargers. More and more, our offices are turning into Gadget Central. So make sure you have a charger for your phone or any other technological device so that you're never out of juice. I just discovered a very simple four-in-one adapter. It has all sorts of different adapters for different brands of phones, Apple, Samsung, Galaxy, all these different types of phones for iPads, for computers, and it's very inexpensive, less than $20, and you get a four-in-one USB adapter charging cable connector. I'll provide a link to that. It's from SIBO, and it's potentially a lifesaver. I mean, you know you've had those days where you forget to charge your phone the night before, and you're expecting a very important phone call, and it comes lunch, and you look at your phone, and it's dead, you're like, what? This is going to be your backup plan. Have this stowed away in your desk. And, and you know, your colleagues and your students can use it as well if that's what you would like as well. But definitely for yourself, a great idea. 
So number six is to have your tech chargers. Try to get a four in one so that you eliminate the cord situation, reducing it down to as few as you actually need, but you'll be thankful that you have this on hand. So number six, tech chargers. Number seven, having your hot drink of choice on hand. Remember, we're going to try to drink healthy in our office because we want to feel good throughout the day, be energized and awake and vibrant and feed our body what it needs. So tea or coffee, try to eliminate the soda and the pop. And having these on hand, whether you keep them in your desk or you have a a room where you can store them, every situation is going to be different. Having your favorite, it for me is a great comfort. And I that's where you're going to have to go out and buy your own. I mean, it's fantastic when staff rooms supply the coffee and the tea, but sometimes they have to get a general flavor to suit a lot of different tastes. Why not bring your own specific one and simply just heat your coffee up in the staff or the office microwave, whatever it is that you do. So number seven is have your tea and coffee prepped and ready to go for each day. And speaking of the whole healthy factor, number eight, have your healthy snacks on hand. I love almonds. I always have almonds on hand, dry, roasted, unsalted almonds. I love Trader Joe's, but there are many different places to get them from. And having this on hand is a great little grab and go when I have to head to a meeting or my afternoon snack. And I just need a little extra something, raisins, anything that kind of gets you going, an apple, fruit, vegetables. These are plan ahead ways to make sure that you always have something to nibble on. And the reason I say almonds is you can stock it ahead of time and for days until they're gone, they can sit on your desk in a jar, a beautiful jar, or however you want to do it. With fruit and vegetables, you're probably going to have to bring those each day from home, which should is a great idea, by the way. But we're talking how do you stock it now? So less sugar, more fiber, protein, making sure that you're eating and feeding your body what it needs so that you can function at your best. So number eight is stock your desk with healthy snacks. Number nine, stock your desk with your hair supplies, whatever your hair needs. If you need rubber bands, bobby pins, whether you need a brush, a comb, whatever, just make sure you have extra of each of these items in your desk to... Make sure you always feel your best. Those little things, again, make a big difference. Because we always have those great hair days. We also have those days of hair when we're like, what the heck happened? And it's nice to know you can always put it up and get it out of your face and go about your business and say, I'll do it better tomorrow. Number 10, because we have so many gadgets nowadays, and while they are very efficient, having all those cords around can be a catastrophe. Or if nothing else, just simply a nuisance. So I found a fantastic way to keep them organized in your desk. It's called Keep a Cable, and it keeps the cables of five different devices tidy and out of the way. It's less than $15, and you receive three of these five cord Keep a Cables. They organize your cords so they all stay in one place, and they aren't scattered all over the place. It's simply like a clip, except for it's not a clip. It's just a plastic little snap a and you are free of cords, and it's all trained to go down in one little simple direction without ruining the desk because it's just a simple adhesive, and you don't have to hammer or tape or do anything to it. Very easy to use. I will provide a link on today's show notes so you can take a look. Number 11, if you don't have a desktop computer, you may want to get a laptop stand. The reason why is that you're able to pull that screen up at a better angle for your head and neck and get it off your desk so that you can keep your desk more organized and not have to fiddle around and lift it up over top of things. And it's just always got a place to go. There's a fantastic lap book stand for under $60 from Griffith Elevator. And there's also one for under $40. And I'll provide a link to those on today's show notes. Have a look at them. I know I'm definitely thinking about it because this year we do have laptops. And from experience, I know that my eyes and my neck are always looking down. And I want to try to change that a little bit. And I know I can't change my computer. So this might be the perfect solution. So number 11 is invest in a laptop stand. Your eyes and your posture will thank you. Number 12 is... Figure out a way to keep your cup of tea and coffee warm. You know what I'm talking about. The day starts, you come to work with your hot cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee from home. It's delicious. Then meetings start, you get busy, 
and you don't get to your coffee for whatever reason, and by the time you get back, it's cold. And I know you could probably microwave it, but what if your particular space, your office doesn't have a microwave? What do you do? How about a Mr. Coffee mug warmer or an electric tea kettle for your office? Simple little addition that will give and doesn't take up much space. If your job allows it, these are great ways to simply be able to reheat the water, in this case for the tea, or your cup of joe that went cold while you're busy doing whatever else you had to do. I personally was so tickled to be able to go get an electric tea kettle because I'm always wanting to sip on something warm throughout the school year. It's just my thing. And this is a great way and so quick of heating up water without making a lot of noise and boop, boop, you get some hot water, you're rejuvenated, and you don't have to walk all the way down to the office staff room or, or copy room or wherever it is that they're heating up water. You can heat up your water typically and you've saved yourself time, which is absolutely priceless. So number 12, find a way to keep your cup of tea or coffee warm. All right, I've just covered the first 12 of the 25 must-have items for an efficient office desk. I'm going to take a quick one-minute intermission, and I will see you on the other side to wrap up the list. Are you a lover of all things French? Did you know The Simple Sophisticate was originally inspired by the host Shannon's fondness for the French's approach to living after she studied abroad in Angers? The ideas of choosing quality over quantity, chic, timeless style over trends, and balancing pleasure alongside reaching our full potential are the central focuses of the top three Francophile-themed episodes. Tune in to episode number four, where we talk about 10 ways to unearth your inner Francophile. Or episode number 23, where we talk about the French way, how to create a luxurious everyday life. Or, for you style lovers, episode number 32, the Francophile Style Guide, the 14 Essentials. Be sure to tune in for a touch of France, no matter where you call home. Welcome back. We're diving right back into the list and we're on number 13 for those must-have items for the efficient office desk. Number 13 is to have your pens and pencils securely staying on your desk. You know what I mean. And this happens not just in school, this happens everywhere. By the time the end of the week comes, you're like, where did my favorite pen go? Where did that pen go? And before you know it, all your pens are gone and you're like, what happened? Well, you're probably not going to solve it entirely. A way of doing this is having some fun with it. I noticed a few of my secretaries, past and present, have done this. And it's a great idea. They wrap their pens with floral tape and a silk flower. And yeah, someone may walk away with it, but they'll know where it came from. And they don't usually do it on purpose or intentionally. They just forget. I know I do it a lot too, but it lets them know whose it is and they bring it back to you. And if not, ah, they're thinking of you, right? (laughs) But it also has a fun little whimsical touch to your desk. I'm sure there are all sorts of ways to do something similar to this, where you basically just personalize your writing utensils, the ones that are on your desk that many people can use. Have some fun with it. Add your personality. I'm a big fan of yellow and blue. I have some yellow little flowers and some hydrangeas that are in that powder blue. Those are just my colors, my my preferences, but have some fun with it. It doesn't take that long to do. And you just buy some pens, get some floral tape, wrap, 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 and you're good. Oh, and you need some wire cutters to cut the silk flower stem to what you need it to be. Other than that, it's really simple. Oh, and what do you put them in? Woohoo, here you go. Get any kind of pot that you want and fill them with green lentils. It kind of looks like soil. They're really soft and silky. They don't make a lot of noise and they keep the pens very secure, kind of like sand, but without such a big mess if you do, for whatever reason, spill them. So number 13 is to figure out a signature way to keep your pens and pencils on your desk. Number 14, add a lint roller to your desk. Having dogs, I know this is a big one. I use tape when I don't have lint rollers, but lint rollers are so much easier to get those errant hairs on those black dresses and pants and shirts that you may be wearing. And you just, oop, there's Norman hair. Got to take that off. So one simple way to make sure every outfit always looks great is to get rid of the hair with a lint roller. Number 15, make sure you have a nail file and clippers on hand. 
There's nothing like a hang now that's snagging on everything that we're doing throughout the day to drive us a little bit crazy. And it's something really small, but ooh, it just drives me crazy. So having a pair of clippers and nail file in hand can quickly resolve that issue. So number 15, have a nail file and clippers. Number 16 is going to tie in with number one, have a water bottle that is yours, that you enjoy, that you can hold easily as you work or teach or whatever you're doing. So when you fill it with water every day or two or three times a day, that's your cup. If by chance you'd leave it somewhere, someone knows who to return it to. So have some fun and go buy a great, fantastic cup. You could even pull an Oprah and go buy a fantastic mug or cup and those silver metal straws that you can keep clean and therefore not mess up your lipstick or spill. I've done that many times before. So I might just want to invest in one of those straws myself. So have some fun with this. Style it up, but um, keep it simple so you're always having water on hand. Number 17 is to add a desk lamp. We have tons of light in our office spaces usually, but not always very flattering or easy on the eyes. And sometimes by the end of the day, I've been grading or reading too many things on my computer and I just want to grade my papers without the overhead lights. And so I turn my desk lamp on and it just is so much more comforting. I have a little bit of natural light from the windows in my room and it just feels a little more cozy, a little more at home. So Pick a desk lamp. There's all sorts of different styles out there and add it to your decor. Number 18 is have access to mother nature. Speaking of windows, not all offices have windows. So if you don't have windows, make sure you bring mother nature in. Could be with a plant, could be with real flowers. It could be with silk flowers, something that is a touch of nature. Daylight's best. Fresh air every once in a while is fantastic. Knowing what the weather is going, what's going on with the weather is always a good thing. I know personally, I have moved rooms in the past solely to get to the daylight. I wanted a window and I was willing to move my room wherever I could to get that daylight. And it does wonders for your mood. But whatever it is, if you don't have options for the window, bring it in. Bring Mother Nature in with plants, with flowers anything that will boost your mood. It does have a positive effect. Number 19, you're in your office a lot. So make sure that whatever background music you want or radio stations you listen to, you have those already pre-programmed, saved, bookmarked, whatever you do, wherever they're at, when maybe they're actually on a radio in your classroom, or maybe they're bookmarked on your computer, have them ready to go. So in a click of a button or a flip of a switch, you can be listening to your morning news, your favorite music, your whatever it is ready to go. Number 20, create a system, a simple system for frequent files, papers, or notebook pads that you use on a daily basis. Maybe you do keep them in a file next to your desk, but maybe there's a few papers that you're going to keep right there on top of your desk. Instead of just laying them on your desk, have some kind of accordion style file folder, a letter holder, whatever it is to keep them organized and ready to grab at a moment's notice without getting lost. Number 21, this one's big for me, and I have a feeling it is for you too, is to create and simplify a to-do list system. Many people do this on their computers. They have Google calendars or they have their iPhone calendar that translates over all their Apple products. Whatever you do, create a system that works for you, that's simple, and make sure that it is efficient. I have gone back and forth and I've talked about this in the past, but I love my post-it system. It works for me. Each day I have a post-it. I put my to-dos on that post-it for the day and I make my way through it. And there's something very cathartic about crossing off those to-dos and tossing that post-it away at the end of the day. I don't know. And it keeps my, my pages on my calendar clean that way. And I can always edit throughout the day to shorten it and just add three items instead of the five that I had previously. So it, it, there's some sort of psychological effect it has on me, but I've always done it and it's always worked. So whatever it is that works for you, make sure you set it up, make sure it's ready to go and stick to it. Because part of doing this is so that your brain doesn't have to remember everything, but you can make sure you still get everything done that needs to be done. Number 22 is to have your favorite coffee mug on hand. Now, I personally have very simple white mugs at my house. But when it comes to my classroom, I have picked up a few mugs for my travels and I bring them and use them there. They, if nothing else, make me smile when I see them. One of my favorites is a mug I picked up in London. It obviously has, as many as you probably will guess, mind the gap on one side, but then has all the different 
tube routes on the other side. And I can kind of point to the routes that I've taken and, and all the stops that I've gotten off on. But there's also different mugs you can get. Maybe you want um, a monogram mug, and I'll provide links to Anthropology's monogram mug or a Scrabble mug with your initial on it. I'll provide a link to that on today's show notes as well. Whatever it is, have your mug. There's something about those little simple signature touches that make a big difference in the everyday routine. Number 23 is to create a calendar or weekly agenda that works for you, similar to the to-do list system, whether you do it on your computer or whether you have it on a desktop calendar where you can write physically write on it. Make sure you have a system that works for you and is efficient again and also simplified. Number 24 is to organize your virtual desktop Nearly all of us have something that we have to do on our computer, whether it's simply to check mail, type documents. Make sure you've set it up on your computer where it's simple to access. Make sure you have an icon for your email. Make sure you have a quick icon to your Word document processing system. Choose the wallpaper for your computer that puts you in a good mood, that calms you down or makes you smile. Bookmark those pages that you frequent all the time when you go to the internet. Simplify the process so that you don't waste time looking for things and therefore able to quickly get to what you need to see and get the job done. Last but not least is 25. And I think this is a big one for using our time wisely because there can be a lot of drains of time throughout the day, whether we cause them or not. The demands on our time, if we don't know how to organize or prioritize our time, we can really waste a lot of it. So here are some ways to preemptively solve or eliminate those time wasters. Number 25 is establish norms for your daily routine. And these are your personal norms. For example, how and when are you going to check your email? There are many different people that only check it twice a day at the beginning and at the end of the day. Some people don't check it until noon because they know they won't get anything that they want to get done completed if they start checking their email. Whatever works for you, whatever is required for you, figure out a norm and stick to it. When will you respond to email and voicemail? Once a day, twice a day, make sure that's set. When and how often do you update your website, your calendar, your visual boards in your room or your office? Figure out a routine, whether it's weekly, daily for those updates, that works. And by being consistent, you're being consistent outwardly to the people you work with or your customers, and they know what to depend on. And that makes you appear and prove to be efficient as well. And With regards to being efficient to those you work with and your customers, be clear about your availability, communicate clearly to your colleagues, your staff, your students, parents, and when they see a standard and they know that you will return their call within 24 hours, they won't keep bugging you the rest of that time thinking you're ignoring them. So be very clear preemptively about how and when you will communicate and tend to each of your expectations or responsibilities. So number 25, establish norms for your daily routine. It's a long list that we've covered and I will have all of them listed on today's show notes. So simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 60. If there's anything you have found to be efficient and helpful when it comes to creating a warm and welcoming productive office space, please do share in the comments. I would love to hear and I know the other listeners and readers would as well. All right, now for this week's Petit Plaisir. I'll see you in just a moment. One of my favorite films to watch and search for to find more of are foreign films, specifically French and Italian films. And while I love reading the subtitles and I learn more French as I watch each of these, I'm also a huge fan of watching movies set in Paris. Now, there's a bunch of them out there. There's a handful of blockbuster ones, but I always love finding those independent or lesser known films. And that was just the case a couple weekends ago when I came across a film starring Michael Caine and Clemence Posey in Last Love, which was actually produced in 2013, and I just now have stumbled across it. Last week on the blog, the style inspiration was all about this French actress and model, Clemence Posey. She has amazing style. She is absolutely stunning. But her role in this film is magnificent. 
I'm going to have you listen to the trailer real briefly, and then I will talk a little bit more about the film and why I think you'll enjoy it as well on the other side. You can miss a single being, even though you're surrounded by countless others. They're an unwelcome distraction. They cloud your vision. So I'm an unwelcome distraction. I'm a cloud. You are the only part of my life I haven't figured out yet. Your hair is so like my wife's hair. Well, I hope you like your wife. I did. She died. Three years, two months, and 11 days ago. What are you doing with my dad? I'm not doing anything with him. I'm his friend. He hasn't told me a word about you. He hasn't told me a word about you either. I thought you didn't have anyone. You know, like, I don't have anyone. And maybe you and I could be family. You have this fantasy about the perfect family that you never got to have. You know, if I had a father like Matthew, I would be very happy. Why? Because he's such a shining example of fatherhood. But he's still alive. All I ever wanted for you was to go out in the world, chase your dreams, find adventure, fall in love, take risks. Why didn't you ever tell me that? What do you want from me? I want you to stop acting like you're the only one who lost her. Sometimes you meet someone who requires all the love you have to give. You're still here, Matthew. If you want things to be different, you can still change them. It's not too late for that. And I adore you, but I did not need a teacher. I needed a father. Please, Matt. I want to go home. Seriously, Dad, why don't you just move back home? I stay right here. Don't let her get away. No. Don't let her run away. Pauline? Yes. Don't let anybody get in your way. Dad, what? Stop it. Okay. The premise, as you may have discerned, is Michael Caine's character is a retired philosophy professor who is living in Paris and who has lived in Paris for quite some time with his wife. She passed on three years ago, and he has now met this young dance instructor played by Posey. They have a fantastic friendship, and as they begin to get to know each other, Michael Caine's character, Matthew Morgan, attempts to end his life unsuccessfully. His children from Maine and Chicago, played by Gillian Anderson and Justin Kirk, arrive to bring him back to the States, but he doesn't want to. And another lovely connection unfolds. I will leave it there. I hope I've piqued your interest. It is directed and written by Sandra Nettlebeck, who attributed this film to her father. It is delightful. I was in tears at times, but I don't think you'll be disappointed. It is absolutely lovely. And who doesn't want to be taken to Paris? For links to the film Last Love, go to the show notes, the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast 60. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book a film, a recipe, or from time to time, introduce you to an expert who offers insight into how to live simply luxuriously. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour. Bonjour.